it. Today we are sharing our best and most popular fast and easy instant pot recipes. These range in so many different categories. We've got chicken and rice, potato soup recipes, holiday recipes, all the things. You're going to love them. So let's start with the first one. Let's get started with the first one. We're going to do a potato ham chowder. And this one is amazing because you can also make it into a freezer meal. And I have that video right over here. That means you put all the ingredients in a bag and then you freeze it. And then you can throw that whole bag frozen into the Instant Pot and cook it in less than three minutes. It's pretty cool. So this recipe is really easy because we just dump pretty much everything except the dairy into the Instant Pot. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are going to start with one bag of Potatoes O'Brien. Like, could you think of anything easier than using frozen potatoes <laughs> in a potato soup? Okay, next we're going to use eight ounces of cubed ham. I purchased mine just like this, but you can also do this recipe after Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, any of those holidays where you use a lot of you know ham and you might have some leftover. We'll do one can of corn. This is a great recipe because you can just dump everything in so simple. Then our spices are just one tablespoon of minced garlic and one teaspoon of real salt. Just throw that in there. We've got a quarter cup of baking crumbles. You can either cook and crumble this yourself or I just use the bagged like pre-made bacon bits just to make it easy. And then we're gonna do two cups of chicken broth and I always use two cups of water with two teaspoons of better than bouillon. So we'll just dump that straight over the top. Might have a little bit of residual bouillon in there. And that's really it. I'm just going to mix it all together. And literally that's all you have to do. So I'm going to put the lid on my Instant Pot. Make sure that knob is set to the ceiling position. And then we're gonna cook this for three minutes on high pressure with a quick release. And then we'll add in just a couple extra ingredients. The potato ham chowder is done. So we are just going to, whoop, vent it. And this is what it looks like. It looks and smells amazing. We're just gonna mix it up a little bit. The potatoes are soft, it smells like corn, ham, oh man. And those onions and peppers from the Potatoes O'Brien, like they really help give it that extra that you really need, that flavor. To this, we are just going to add one cup of heavy cream. If you don't wanna do cream, I'm sorry. You could do half and half, you could do milk, but it just won't be quite as thick and creamy. So one cup of heavy cream, half a cup of sour cream, and then we'll give that a a little stir. We want to bring down the temperature just a little bit before we add the cheese so then it doesn't curdle and seize the cheese. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Okay, and then to that we're just going to add about half a cup of cheddar cheese or however much your heart desires because things like cheese, garlic, they should be measured with your heart. <laughs> and that is it. That literally took like 20 minutes all in and that is pretty freaking cool and we used frozen potatoes we didn't have to chop up the potatoes we didn't have to chop up the, the peppers or the onions we used a can of corn like that one is so simple and easy we've got potato ham chowder so good for fall all of these recipes can be found in my cookbook, the I Love My Instant Pot Cooking for One book. All of the recipes are scaled down for a single serving, so they're about two cup portions, and they are just as good as the original. You can pick up this book anywhere books are sold. You can find it on Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, any book distributor, and I know you'll love it. This next recipe for loaded baked potato soup is a reader favorite. And you can make this recipe using frozen hash brown potatoes like I am today, just because it's super easy. Or you can cut up your own potatoes or you can even use leftover mashed potatoes. Let's get started by turning our Instant Pot to the high saute function. And then I'm going to add three to five pieces of thick cut bacon. Now I definitely recommend using the thick cut bacon so then there's enough fat and flavor in the soup. So I have just a couple pieces of bacon 
that we're gonna add to our Instant Pot and crisp up. Here's a quick tip on your bacon. If you put your bacon in the freezer for about 20 minutes before you cut it, it will cut way easier. The fat will solidify in the bacon and you'll just be able to slice right through it without it getting slimy and all over the place. And did you know, when you cut bacon into little chunks like this, they're called bacon lardons. So when you see that in recipes, you'll now know cutting bacon into lardons is little pieces. The bacon's done crisping and I just scooped it out and put it in a separate bowl. Then you should have about a quarter cup of bacon grease in there and that's totally fine. Just keep that in because we want to keep that flavor and a little bit of that fat. So to this, we are going to add one tablespoon of minced garlic. one two pound bag of hash brown potatoes and you can use regular potatoes if you like i've got those instructions on my website Next, we have two tablespoons of onion flakes, a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And just like the last recipe, this one's so awesome because you can pre-prepare this and use it as a freezer meal. Just put all these ingredients in a bag and prepare it from frozen, so it's really easy. Okay, mix that around for a minute. And then we're going to add two cups of chicken broth. I always use two cups of hot water with two teaspoons of better than bouillon. Let's mix this up a little bit. Perfect. If you like, you can add a little bit of that bacon to cook in with it, but I prefer to sprinkle it on the top because I think it just kind of looks prettier, but you can also cook it in the soup as well. And that's it. We're gonna put the lid on it. We're gonna cook it for three minutes from frozen, and then we'll add a couple extra ingredients at the end. The loaded baked potato soup is ready to come out, so I just turned the knob from the ceiling to the venting position, and this is what it looks like. Now this is the fun part. After you pressure cook the loaded potato soup, you're going to take a potato masher and just mash these potatoes up about five or eight times just to kind of break up some of those potatoes. We don't wanna make mashed potatoes, so we're just going to mash it up just a little bit to still have some chunks, but not too many. It will be pretty thick. I think that looks pretty good. If you don't like any chunks at all, you can like mash it till you make mashed potatoes, and that's totally fine too. To this, we are going to add one cup of heavy cream because heavy cream just makes everything more delicious. If you don't wanna use cream, you can use milk, half and half. And then this is what makes it taste like loaded baked potato soup. It's one cup of sour cream. This is so good. That sour cream is really important because it makes it taste like an actual loaded baked potato and not just potato soup. Okay, we're cooling it down just a little bit here before we add the cheese because we don't want the cheese to curdle or seize. And then we've got one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. I always add extra on top of each bowl. I like to let that kind of melt down. I also like adding some of the bacon back into the soup, but I also like having a lot of it to kind of put on top of each bowl just because then it's really pretty. But we can put some of that in there as well. If you would like, you can also do some freeze-dried chives, real chives, green onions into the soup, or I find like a lot of kids don't really like green stuff in their soup, so I usually just top each bowl with that as well. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Okay, and that's it. This only cooked for three minutes. It used a frozen bag of potato hash browns, and it tastes like you slaved over it all day. Enjoy. I love this one so much. We're making Zuppa Toscana, which is a yummy Italian soup. You may have had it at Olive Garden, but my version is way better. So first we're going to start out by sauteing a half pound of thick cut bacon in the Instant Pot and then taking that out after it has crisped up. I've already done that here. And then I leave about two tablespoons of the bacon grease inside the pan. Next we're gonna add one chopped onion, and I just use pre-chopped onion, <laughs> right in there with all of that bacon grease. And then we're gonna do one pound of Jimmy Dean sausage. I find that the Jimmy Dean brand is actually like worth splurging on. I don't really like using store brand sausage 
This one just tastes really good. And since it's the main protein, I definitely recommend just spending a little bit extra to get the higher quality sausage. To the sausage and the onions, I'm adding two tablespoons of minced garlic. And then to this, one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. If you don't like it spicy, then just do just a pinch of the red pepper flakes. You still want that flavor. And then you just, we're gonna use that little chopper masher thing that I bought on that Amazon video I did earlier this summer. And we want to just chop this all up. Try and lift up some of that fond on the bottom of the pot from the bacon. All those round bits, that's all flavor that we want to suck off the bottom of the pot and scrape off. Okay, we'll let this saute for just a couple minutes until the meat is cooked through. While we are waiting for our sausage and onions to cut, I usually like to cut up my potatoes, so I'll show you how to do that. So I like to use russet potatoes because they have a really pretty skin on them. First thing I do is just cut them straight down the middle, like this, and then you'll put them on the widest base. And then we're going to cut them one more time down the middle, so now you have four potato quarters, and then you just go straight down the line in about quarter inch sections. You don't want them too thin or too thick. What you'll get here are these little triangle pieces of potato, and these are the perfect bite in Zuppa Toscana. So I'm just going to cut these all up. I use about five potatoes and put them in a bowl of water so then they don't turn brown while I get everything else ready. The meat and the onions are looking good. They don't have to be like 100% done, just like 90% done, because it's all gonna cook. Okay, to this, we are going to add one cup of chicken broth. So I have my chicken broth here. It's just six cups of water with six teaspoons of better than bouillon. I like to just do like one cup right at the beginning beginning and then deglaze the pot. So the pot is still on saute mode. I'm just taking my Thermalworks spatula, my silicone spatula, it's the best one out there, and just scrape everything off the bottom of the pot. We really want to make sure that all that flavor is lifted off the pot. So one, we get that flavor and it tastes good. Second, because we don't want it to burn and get the burn notice. All right, it looks good. Okay, so to this we are going to add five potatoes. I think this is about five cups. Um, five or six potatoes. I find one regular like small to medium potato is usually about one cup. So I cut these up into little triangles like you can see here. It's very simple. Now we're gonna add the rest of our chicken broth. If you'd like to do a lower carb option, you can do cauliflower in place of the potatoes. If you like more meat, you can add an additional pound of sausage. I usually like to do two more cups of liquid when I do that. And if you want it dairy-free, there are options to do dairy-free. All of those details are on my website, trytestedentry.com. And that's it. I do not like to pressure cook with the crispy bacon in there because I feel like it kind of gets soggy. So I'm just going to cook this for one minute on high pressure. The reason it's only one minute is because everything else is cooked besides the potatoes and these potatoes are super tiny. We don't wanna make mashed potatoes so we just want to cook these through. It only takes one minute. So we're gonna put the lid on and pressure cook for one minute. To cut the kale, make sure first that you wash it and look in all these little grooves to make sure there's not any little bugs in there. And then what I do is I just hold the very tip of the stem here and then just pull it right off. This middle stalk is really thick and very hard. It's not really good to eat. So you always wanna make sure you strip that off. And then what I like to do is kind of have a bunch of the kale leaves like this. And then what I'd like to do is roll them up together. So I'll just kind of bunch everything like this and then roll it up really tightly. And then we are going to make little kale ribbons. I like doing the ribbons more than just like the big chunks because I think they look prettier in the soup. So we're just gonna do really thin ribbons of kale, about maybe a quarter inch. And if you have any straggly pieces like this, you can just kind of rip them up like that. But then we have these really pretty ribbons of kale that run throughout the soup, not these giant chunks like huge leaves. And I think that looks really pretty. The Zupa Toscana is done. It only cooked for one minute and this is what it looks like. 
So you'll see when you take off the lid, there's kind of a red film on there. That's just some fat. If you use a spicy sausage, this will be really red. So if you don't like it, you can just use a skimmer and just take off some of that fat off the top. If it doesn't bother you, which it doesn't really bother me, you can just leave it. So to this, we are going to now add one bunch of kale that we chiffonaded. And I like to kind of massage it with my fingers or like with my hands a little bit just to um, tenderize the kale. So we are going to add one bunch or however much you want. If you don't like that much kale, don't put in that much kale. But we are just going to let this wilt for just a second so I kind of press it down. We don't want to crush up those beautiful potatoes, so you want to be really gentle. And you can see some of the potatoes have broken and then that skin on the potato turns into a little ribbon. It's really pretty, just swimming throughout the soup. And that kale only takes about one or two minutes to really wilt down. And then we'll add the rest of our bacon or if you wanna save some for the top, you can always do that as well. And then the last ingredient, which is the best, is just one cup of heavy cream. If you don't wanna do heavy cream, you don't have to. It's really good without the cream, but we really like the cream. <laughs> now mix that in. And this is a showstopper. It's delicious. You can add a little bit of extra salt and pepper or crushed red pepper flakes if you like, but we love it just like this. Enjoy. Next up is one of my absolute favorites. It's clam chowder. This one is so good. We're going to start off with three slices of thick cut bacon and I've already gone ahead and crisped that and then leave that in the pot. To this, we are going to add half of an onion. About one cup of diced celery. Five cups of red potatoes, and I just, I just cut them up into little tiny chunks like that. If you don't want to cut the red potatoes, you can also use the hash brown potatoes, but I just really like the color of the potatoes in this soup. I think it looks really pretty. And like just like the other soup, usually one red potato is about one cup. If they're a little bit smaller, they might be a little bit less than a cup. Wow, it already smells good. <laughs> All right, to that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of minced garlic, three teaspoons of salt, three quarters of a teaspoon of thyme, and three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna dump all of that in there. And then I like to let this saute for just a couple minutes to kind of embed all that bacony goodness into the vegetables. To the vegetable mixture, we are going to deglaze the pot with three tablespoons of white cooking wine. This really gives the soup like a really yummy flavor. And then one and a half cups of chicken broth. So I just use the one and a half cups of hot water and one and a half teaspoons of better than bouillon. Then I'm going to take the clam juice out of two cans of clams. So here I have a 10 ounce can and this one is a six and a half ounce can of clams. I just drain these. So I strain the juice and I'm gonna use that juice. Make sure you keep the clams because we're gonna add those later. I'm making rolls as well. So I'm going to take my thermopen to make sure that they are cooked. I always wanna cook my rolls till they're 190 degrees minimum in the center. And that's what I love about cooking with temperature is that you will never have doughy rolls or bread as long as you take the temperature you always know so put that aside so to this we are going to add the clam juice this is about one and a quarter cup make sure you strain it otherwise you might get some like little piece of shell in there don't want that and that's it make sure you scrape the bottom of the pot to deglaze it we don't want it to burn gotta lift up all that bacon flavor i also forgot just add one bay leaf in there and then you can pressure cook. And now we're going to let this cook for two minutes on high pressure with a quick release. All of these recipes are so quick and easy. I really love that. Soup is done. Oh my, and it smells delicious. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just fish out that bay leaf because we don't eat bay leaves. That, we'll just take that out, throw that away. And then we're going to add the clams from the 10 ounce can and the six and a half ounce can. I made sure to rinse them because we don't want any little questionable pieces or any little shells. So we're going to add that and just let them kind of warm through. And you can also add the bacon now, or you can add it in, you know, on the top. Like I said, I like to do both. I usually make extra bacon actually for this recipe. Okay, this looks great. I am going to turn it back on saute mode for just a second, and then we are going to 
thicken this soup using three cups of heavy cream mixed with six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. All I do is I take the flour and I whisk it into the heavy cream and it becomes just kind of like a roux paste and it's really nice. So we've got our three cups of heavy cream mixed with six tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Just gonna add that right into the soup. This one's definitely, ugh, I don't know. I actually just tasted all of them. You can see them behind me. And I'm like, oh, that one's so good. And then I'll taste the other one. I'm like, oh, that one's way good. They're all so good. So I know that you're gonna love them, especially if you love bacon heavy cream and potatoes like I do, because all of these recipes have all of that in them. Okay, and then I just bring this to a boil and then that will thicken it up really nicely. It's fantastic. I like to serve clam chowder in a sourdough bread bowl or with really crusty classic French bread. It's amazing. Okay, and there you go, enjoy. Chicken and rice is one of the most common and iconic food combinations in the entire world. Everyone has their own spin on it. And today I'm sharing with you four easy instant pot chicken and rice dishes your whole family will love. The first recipe we're doing today is teriyaki chicken rice bowls with tons of vegetables. Everyone is going to love them in your family. So the first thing we do is just season our chicken tenderloins. I'm using four chicken tenderloins, but I would account for about two to three per person, depending on how big of a serving size you want to do. I'm going to season these with a little bit of garlic salt, or you can also do salt and garlic powder, some pepper and some ginger. Flip them over and do the exact same thing on the other side. And today we are using chicken tenderloins for all of these recipes. They're incredibly tender. They're really easy to cook because they cook really quickly. And so I like using that. But if you wanna use chicken breasts or chicken thighs, any of those will work. So first put your Instant Pot on high saute and then add about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. When the Instant Pot is hot and the oil is nice and glistening and shiny, then we can add in our seasoned chicken tenderloins. If you want to use a different kind of chicken, like a chicken breast or chicken thigh, just make sure that you cook it a little bit longer. But for the best, most consistent result, I would use the chicken tenderloins like we've used in the recipe today. I like to sear the chicken tenderloins. You're not cooking them through all the way, but I like to sear them on each side so that they can get a little bit of extra flavor. This step is completely optional if you don't have the time, but I highly recommend it because you want to add another layer of flavor to your chicken teriyaki rice bowl, and this will do that for you. After the chicken has seared on that other side, take out the chicken and just put them on a reserved plate. You'll notice all these yummy browned bits at the bottom of the pot, that's called a fond, and you want that because it's all that amazing flavor. However, you want to deglaze your pot with a cup and a half of water or chicken broth so it doesn't stick and burn onto your Instant Pot. So add in that liquid and then use a spatula or a wooden spoon and scrape all those brown bits off the bottom of the pot. Otherwise, you might get the burn notice. Next, add one cup of rice. Here I'm using long grain white rice, but you can also use jasmine rice or basmati rice. And you can see that recipe and video right here. So after you kind of stir in your rice, then we are going to just add our chicken tenderloins right back on top of that rice and broth or water. And then I'm going to add half a cup of teriyaki sauce. You don't want to mix this because we don't want all that sugar getting mixed into the water too much. And so just add that chicken teriyaki marinade right over the top. You can either make your own or I just use a store-bought version. Close the lid, turn the knob to sealing, and then press the manual or pressure cook button and adjust to five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. If you use a different kind of chicken, you'll probably have to cook it a little bit longer. However, you want to cook any chicken into a smaller manageable size because if you cook the rice too long, it will be really soggy. After the chicken and the rice are done, just open up that lid and then quickly add three to four cups of frozen vegetables. I like using this stir fry mix because it has a lot of really yummy vegetables that you find in a chicken teriyaki rice bowl and it's frozen so it's even easier. So add in the frozen vegetables and then give it a quick stir just to kind of toss in all those frozen vegetables into the hot chicken and rice and then put the lid back onto the Instant Pot and then let it sit for about five minutes. The vegetables are already cooked and so what you wanna do is just steam them through and make sure that they're nice and warm, but we don't wanna pressure cook with the vegetables otherwise they will be a soggy mess. 
And that's it. All you have to do is just scoop it into a bowl. And if you want, you can add some extra teriyaki sauce and some sesame seeds for some garnish. And that is a super easy, healthy, delicious meal that you can make for your family in less than 30 minutes. The next dish I'm sharing with you is Cajun sausage and rice. This dish is super smoky and meaty and spicy and colorful. It's really going to be something that you make all the time. So to start out, we are going to add two tablespoons of olive oil to a hot instant pot. And then we are going to saute some Cajun sausage. So I ordered Cajun chicken sausage in my grocery order, but they accidentally gave me pork Cajun sausage. Totally fine, it all works right. You'll still count this as a chicken and rice recipe. So I like to just cut the sausage on the diagonal, on a bias, which is cut diagonally. And then we're going to saute that in the hot olive oil for just a couple of minutes. And then we're also going to add in our pretty vegetables. So I like to add one whole red bell pepper, one whole yellow bell pepper, and then three quarters of a cup of chopped celery. If you want, you can also add half of an onion, either a yellow onion or a red onion. Both of those would be great in this dish. Mix that up and let it saute for just a minute while we put together our seasoning blend. So in this little bowl, I have one tablespoon of dried onion flakes, three teaspoons of Cajun seasoning, just use your favorite kind, but if it's really spicy, maybe do just one and a half or two teaspoons to start out. A quarter teaspoon of thyme, a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of oregano, and then we're just gonna shake this all up and dump it into our sausage and veggie mixture. After that, add one teaspoon of minced garlic, and then we're just going to let this saute for just a couple minutes. After the sausage and veggies have sauteed for a couple minutes and they have a little bit of brown on them, we're going to deglaze the pot with one tablespoon of soy sauce, half a cup of water, and one cup of chicken broth. We're also adding one cup of long grain white rice, and then just stir this all up. Make sure that there's nothing stuck on the bottom of the pot, otherwise it will get really burned and you don't want that. So scrape all that yummy flavor off the bottom of the pot, make sure the rice is submerged, and then we're ready to cook our Cajun sausage and rice. Lock the lid onto your Instant Pot, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then cook on manual high pressure for five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. This dish is really easy to make. It's spicy, it's saucy, it's really delicious. And I know you're going to enjoy it with your families. So tell me if you make this in the comments below. The next recipe we're going to do today is a lemony garlic chicken and rice. This dish is loved by everyone. Both of my kids had two servings each, so you know that it's a good one. First, press the saute button on your Instant Pot and get it nice and hot, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of garlic butter. If you don't have garlic butter on hand, you can always use some garlic powder with some salt and some other seasonings in there, and that will work just fine. To the melted garlic butter, we are going to add one cup of long grain white rice, and then we're going to saute it to make a rice pilaf. We want to just make sure that the rice is nice and nutty and browned, so good, it kind of absorbs all that delicious flavor. And then that's really it. We're going to add in half a pound to one pound of chicken tenderloins and then just mix that all up and make sure that there's not any rice sticking to the bottom of the pot. After you add the chicken tenderloins into the rice and you just kind of mix that up a little bit, we're going to add a little bit more seasoning. So I like using this delicious lemon pepper. It is so good. It's the best lemon pepper I've ever used. I'll link this below. Um, and then we're also going to add about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of dried oregano. After a couple minutes, all you need to do is deglaze the pot with one cup of chicken broth. And then I'm also going to add the juice of one lemon, which is about a quarter cup, but if you have more, that's totally fine. And then a half a cup of some Olive Garden dressing. After everything is in the pot, I like to top it with a couple of lemon slices for some presentation and flavor, and then we're ready to pressure cook. So just put the lid on your Instant Pot, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then cook for five minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release. If you want to add even more flavor to this dish, you can saute the chicken tenderloins with a little bit of lemon pepper or garlic powder seasoning in that garlic butter at first, and then take them out 
and then you cook the rice with a little bit more garlic butter just so then every layer has a little bit more flavor but this dish is super easy because you can just throw everything together you don't really have to even saute for very long and it's ready to go in 30 minutes or less so after the lemon garlic chicken has rested for 10 minutes with a natural pressure release, just open up that lid and then you're ready to eat. You can add more Olive Garden dressing if you want a little bit more kick. If you want to add a little bit more lemon zest or lemon juice, that's really good as well. And this dish goes really well with some steamed broccoli, steamed asparagus, um, any green vegetable. It's so fresh and bright and buttery and garlicky. You're gonna love it. The last dish I'm sharing with you today was inspired by my college roommate, Jalen, who made this, she called it chicken spaghetti, but today we're making chicken and rice, but it's kind of a Ritz chicken casserole and it's so creamy, it's crunchy, you're really going to devour it. First, I'm going to press the saute button on my Instant Pot and then add two tablespoons of butter. We want to just make sure that's nice and melted and hot before we add in our chicken. And in the meantime, we're going to season our chicken tenderloins. Here I'm using half a pound of chicken tenderloins. You can use up to a pound. And I'm going to season it with a little bit of garlic salt, pepper, and parsley. Flip them over and season them on the other side so then there's flavor all around. And then we're going to saute them in the Instant Pot to get them nice and browned on both sides. This step is optional, but it does add a ton of really good flavor to the finished dish, and so I do recommend it. If you don't have time for it though, just throw everything in the Instant Pot and you're totally fine. When you're sauteing the chicken, make sure you don't touch it. So don't mess with it and keep moving it and keep flipping it. You only want to flip it one time. You wanna get that nice brown crispy sear on each side. After the chicken is done browning on both sides, remove them to a plate. You don't need to cook them all the way. You're just getting them browned. And then after you remove the chicken, add one and a quarter cup of chicken broth to the pot to deglaze the bottom of the pot. You want to also add one cup of long grain white rice. You can also use jasmine or basmati rice and scrape off the bottom of that pot. You don't want any of those brown bits stuck on there. Otherwise your instant pot might burn. This is seriously so easy. So now you just put the chicken tenderloins back on top of the rice and that's it. Make sure you add in any of those juices that may have come out of the chicken while it was resting. Pour them in there because that's all flavor and you really want that and then add the lid back onto your Instant Pot, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then we're going to cook this for five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. At this point, you want to kind of decide what you're going to do. If you have an air fryer lid, then that's great. If not, you'll want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees and get a casserole dish out because you want to transfer your creamy Ritz chicken into the casserole dish to get nice and crispy with this yummy buttery Ritz topping that we're making now. So I'm just going to take one sleeve of Ritz crackers. If you don't have Ritz, you can also use saltines. You could use some cornflake cereal. You could use panko. Uh, breadcrumbs, anything like that. But this is Ritz chicken, so we really want that yummy, fattening, buttery cookie or cracker. And we're gonna just crunch up all those Ritz crackers in the sleeve itself and dump them into three tablespoons of melted butter. Toss that up to make sure all of those cracker bits get nice and submerged in that yummy butter. And then we're going to pour this all over our Ritz chicken before we bake it. So I told you before that this is inspired by my roommate, my college roommate, we were 18. This was like our fancy meal that we made for friends or boys that came over. And so I have a very nostalgic feeling about this recipe. And it's fun because I've converted it into a rice recipe. But like I said, you can make this with uh, spaghetti noodles or any other kind of noodle. It would be just as good. So after the 10 minute natural pressure release, just remove that lid. And then I like to remove the chicken tenderloins away from the rice. So then it kind of stays a little bit prettier, but you don't have to if you don't want to, because now we're going to add in the rest of the chicken and rice casserole ingredients. So like I said, I'm removing the chicken tenderloins here, and then we are going to add one can of cream of chicken soup. You kind of want to work fast right now because you want to keep everything hot in the pot. So make sure that your Instant Pot is on keep warm mode so then it can heat through the soup and the next ingredient, which is one cup of sour cream into the rice and just mix that all up to make sure it gets warmed up. At this point, you can also add some shredded cheddar cheese. That would be really delicious, but I like mine just 
just plain like this. So add in the soup, add in the sour cream, and mix it all up and keep it warm. Once you're done with that, add the chicken tenderloins back on top of that creamy rice casserole, and then add our crushed Ritz crackers on top. This makes a really yummy buttery topping and it's so good, it's like the iconic kind of American casserole. So I'm setting my air fryer lid that I have here to 350 degrees. And we're gonna set it at 10 minutes and just kind of check and see. I'm pretty sure this was done in about three to five minutes. It wasn't, it didn't take very long at all. So you can see it's really nice and brown and crisp. It looks perfect. If you don't have an air fryer lid, all you have to do is just transfer that rice mixture into a greased casserole dish, and then you can put your chicken and Ritz crackers on top of that, and then bake it in the oven at 350 for about 15 to 30 minutes until it's nice and brown and crispy and golden on top. This is the completed dish. It's so indulgent and creamy and crunchy, and it really just reminds me of like, childhood because that's what I was when I was a freshman in college. It's so fun and I know that everyone in your family will enjoy this, especially the kids. You can also add some additional cheese to this recipe. It would be really delicious. But there you have it, four easy chicken and rice dishes you can make in the Instant Pot. Most of these have very little steps and it's so good. We all know that the most valuable real estate in your home during the holidays is the stovetop and the oven. That's why it kills me when I see people wasting so much precious space in the oven and the stovetop making these holiday dishes that are way easier and faster in the Instant Pot. These four dishes today are going to blow your mind, so let's start with the first one. The first recipe you should never make again on the stovetop are mashed potatoes. First rinse and wash your potatoes, then peel them and cut into one inch cubes. If you cut into halves or they're bigger, make sure you add two to four minutes to the cook time. Add one cup of chicken broth to your potatoes and then that's all you have to do. Lock the lid, set the knob to ceiling, then cook on manual high pressure for five to seven minutes depending on how large your potatoes are. These cooked for seven minutes. I recommend using russet potatoes, those are really good, or red potatoes are also delicious for mashed potatoes because they're very starchy and they have really good flavor. After the seven minutes are up, make sure you do a quick release, otherwise the potatoes may burn or brown on the bottom. Open the lid and check the potatoes with a fork or a knife to ensure that they're cooked all the way through. You shouldn't have any excess liquid in your Instant Pot, but if you do, just drain them and add them back to the Instant Pot. Then and we like to mash our potatoes with butter and half and half and I only do a little bit of salt because usually the gravy in the meal has a lot of salt in it so I don't do too much salt in my mashed potatoes. I also recommend using an actual potato masher versus a stand or hand mixer because you don't want to over mix your potatoes. That's what makes them all gloopy and hard and starchy so do them by hand and they are going to be amazing. I will never make cranberry sauce on the stove again after using my Instant Pot. To begin, add 12 ounces of washed fresh cranberries to your Instant Pot, and I'm using my three quart Instant Pot here today, and then add three quarters of a cup of sugar. You can also do half a cup of sugar, kind of play around with how sweet you like it. Next, add a quarter cup of apple juice, and I didn't have apple juice today, so I just used some applesauce. That's totally fine. Then add a quarter cup of orange juice. You can use fresh or, you know, whatever you get at the grocery store. And then grate in about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon of fresh ginger. This really makes a big difference and if you can get fresh, I definitely recommend it. If you don't have fresh, just use a little bit of powdered ginger and that will work fine as well. Then I always eyeball just about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We love cinnamon in ours, so I usually add just a little extra. Mix to coat and combine all of the ingredients and then we will pressure cook this for just five minutes on high pressure. The big thing with this is to make sure that you allow a full natural pressure release. This usually takes about 30 minutes because if you don't, you will have cranberry sauce going everywhere. Cranberry sauce will froth and you want to make sure that that pressure comes down very slowly and naturally. After the 30 minutes, remove the lid and stir until those berries break up a little bit and you get the consistency to your liking. 
thing. If you want it a little bit thicker, you can simmer this on low saute for a couple minutes to reduce it, but once it cools, it will thicken up. You can store this in the refrigerator for several weeks before Thanksgiving, so you can make this early on. Look how delicious this looks, and I use it on turkey sandwiches, pork tenderloin, and of course, Thanksgiving dinner. I always get so many compliments whenever I make my instant pot bacon green beans for a weeknight dinner or for the holidays. They are so delicious. So to start, we are going to press the saute button on the instant pot and adjust to high. Add three pieces of sliced thick cut bacon and cook them until they're nice and crispy. If you like, you can also add three large mushrooms that are diced up at this point, but I didn't have any today. So we're just going to add two tablespoons of dried onion flakes one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic, deglaze the pot with half a cup of water mixed with one teaspoon of chicken better than bouillon, and it's gonna be a little steamy because it's on saute, but then you also add two tablespoons of soy sauce. Then take a wooden spoon and scrape the bottom of the pot, all those browned bits. This is really important because we don't want anything to burn. Next, add two pounds of fresh green beans that have been washed and the ends have been cut off. I like to use the French green beans. Mix everything together for a couple seconds, then lock the lid, turn the knob to sealing, and cook on manual high pressure for just two minutes. Allow a five minute natural pressure release, then remove the lid. Transfer the green beans to a serving bowl or a platter and make sure you get all of that sauce, the bacon, the mushrooms if you still have them, and pour it all over the green beans. These are so good for any type of dinner, but I love to serve them for the holidays. <music> Definitely one of the dishes I will never make on the stovetop again. I feel like you either love sweet potato casserole or you don't. I happen to love it, so let's make it in the Instant Pot. First, place a trivet into your Instant Pot. You need something to keep the sweet potatoes off the bottom of the pot. I like to quarter them like this and peel the skins off after because it's way easier to do it after they're cooked versus before. Then add one cup of water to the Instant Pot and we're going to just steam them like this. For these sweet potatoes, I did 35 minutes with a quick release. After they're done cooking, remove the sweet potatoes from the Instant Pot, take off the skins, and then put them back in the Instant Pot so you can mash them up in there. If you don't want to do that, you can also mash them in a separate bowl. To your sweet potatoes, add half a cup of softened butter, one half to three quarters of a cup of sugar, depending on how sweet you like it, half a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Take a hand mixer or a potato masher like this and mash this all together. It's basically like you're making sweet potato mash. After the sweet potatoes are mostly mashed, add four beaten eggs while you're mixing. Adding the eggs to the sweet potato casserole makes it really fluffy and gives it more of a souffle texture. Make sure that your Instant Pot is not on keep warm or the saute function because we don't want to cook the eggs, we just want to make sure that they get blended in. Spray a 9x13 pan with nonstick spray, then spread the sweet potato mixture evenly into the pan. And next, we'll make our streusel. Start with half a cup of melted butter, one cup of brown sugar, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Mash this all together to make a yummy streusel, and then add a cup and a half to two cups of chopped pecans. Then mix this all together. Add a generous layer of the streusel on top of the sweet potato casserole, and you may have some left over, and that's okay. Bake this at 375 for 30 to 35 minutes or until the streusel is firm and golden and bubbly. Let it cool for about 10 minutes to set, and then enjoy. I hope you learned a thing or two about how you can save time and space by using your Instant Pot during your holiday cooking. Let's make four Instant Pot semi-homemade meals. These meals come together really quickly and they use store-bought ingredients. It's going to be really fun, so let's get started. Today, we're going to start out with a really easy meal that you really don't need anything for. It's Instant Pot Kraft Mac and Cheese. Now, this is a no-drain method, so it's really nice for those who cannot drain things, who are living in small spaces, who don't have colanders, or just 
just someone who wants a really simple and easy meal. So let's get started. This is my favorite no drain instant pot craft mac and cheese because it is so easy. I tested this recipe like five times to make sure that the ratio was perfect so that it was no drain and the noodles were cooked perfectly. So start with one and a half cups of water. Take up the cheese sauce. We don't need that quite yet. And then add your noodles. Now let's stir this and all we're gonna do is cook. Make sure your knob is set to sealing and we are going to cook this for three minutes with a three minute natural pressure release. Our mac and cheese has been naturally releasing pressure for three minutes and it's perfect. So to this, I'm just adding the recommended amount of butter and milk. And my secret to amazing mac and cheese is to use half and half or heavy cream instead of the milk. It makes it way creamy. And now just mix. You might have to break up some of the noodles. That's totally normal. But as you can see, we don't need to drain anything. This kind of makes it taste like easy mac because it's absorbing all those starches that otherwise would be drained out when you drain it. But it still tastes so good and it's really easy. And there you go. One pot, no drain, easy craft mac and cheese. This next dish is Instant Pot Margarita Pasta. And if you've never had marinated mozzarella balls before, these things are amazing. The only thing is I recommend that you buy them at a big box store like Costco or Sam's Club because they are like literally half the price there versus a small container at the grocery store, but they are amazing and they make this meal come together really quickly. I really like making this margarita pasta in the summertime, but it's also really nice in the winter because it's so fresh and it's easy. I really like serving this meal in the summer summertime because obviously you can have fresh tomatoes and fresh basil from your garden if you have it. However, in the winter, it's really nice too because if you're already having the mozzarella balls for a party or charcuterie board or something, you can have them and just make a really simple, light and quick meal at home in the winter time when we have so many other heavy foods that we love to eat in the winter as well. This one is a total favorite of mine. We're going to start with one and a half cups of water, half a cup of white cooking wine. This just adds like really good flavor. One teaspoon of some minced onion flakes, a quarter teaspoon of some crushed red pepper flakes for some spice, and some salt and pepper. To this, we're gonna add eight ounces of angel hair pasta, and this is like some half length that I already found at the store. I've never heard of that before, but this is nice for our purposes because regular angel hair pasta would not fit in the Instant Pot, so I always break it in half anyways. So what I do is I take the pasta and then I just scatter it a little bit like that, and then I go in the opposite direction and just scatter it in then just take the noodles and then crisscross them like this so then they don't clump up as easily. To this, I'm adding two and a half cups of cherry tomatoes. And I actually had these ones in the freezer that I didn't use this summer, so I'm also going to add these in. Just frozen, okay? And that's all we need to put in the Instant Pot. I'm going to put the lid on and then we're gonna cook this for two minutes on high pressure with a quick release. Let's finish up this margarita pasta. So after a quick release, we're going to just take off the lid. And I like to just give it a little fluff to kind of break up the noodles a little bit. Oh, it smells so good. You might have some clumped up noodles like that, but that's okay. You can just kind of chop them up a little bit. The tomatoes break up a little bit like that and kind of turn into a sauce. It's delicious. And to this, we're going to add two cups of the marinated mozzarella balls and a little bit of the reserved oil. So there's just a little bit in there. It's usually seasoned. That's why I like to add just a little bit. And we also have some fresh basil that I'm just going to tear up and add in. It is so fresh and so, so good. You have to have the fresh basil, but you can get like a fresh basil plant in the produce section of your grocery store. I just got this one at Walmart. Now mix it together and how amazing does that look? The mozzarella balls, when they get warm, they get really like chewy and oh, they're so good. And there's your margarita pasta. I like to serve mine with a crack of fresh black pepper, some Parmesan cheese if you like. And this is totally optional, but if you like balsamic glaze like I do, this stuff is freaking so good on this pasta. You can do a little drizzle of that. And there you go. This is so good. This next dish is really popular with my kids and like a ton of other people. They really like this one. It's Instant Pot Ramen Stir Fry. So it's kind of like reminiscent of that home ec meal that you made in junior high 
Thai or high school where it's ramen, but it has noodles, where it's ramen, but you also have vegetables. You have a couple more ingredients that really take it over the edge. If you want to add some protein like an egg or some meat that you have in the fridge, totally go for it. It's really easy. This recipe is also in my cookbook. It's my instant pot cooking for one cookbook. I'll link right here. It has 175 recipes that are single serving instant pot meals. It is awesome and I know you'll love it. To make the ramen noodle stir fry, we're going to do one package of ramen and I like to kind of just break it up a little bit. Add one cup of water, one cup of veggie stir fry. I'm using one and a half cups, then a quarter teaspoon of some minced garlic or some garlic powder, quarter teaspoon of sesame seeds, a quarter teaspoon of soy sauce, a quarter teaspoon of sesame oil, and one half teaspoon of the seasoning packet it came with. It's about half. If you wanna add the whole thing and add an additional cup of water, then you'll have like a ramen soup. And that's all you have to do. So you put the lid on, make sure that the lid is on and in the ceiling position, and then we will just pressure cook this for only one minute with a quick release. After the one minute cook time, you just do a quick release by releasing the steam and waiting for it to come down and then you just want to stir it together and give it just a second to kind of absorb the rest of the liquid and then you are ready to eat and there you have it it does thicken a little bit as it cools and you can add like i said anything you want to this and you have a really yummy simple easy instant pot ramen stir fry <laughs> this last one is really nice for a really busy weeknight it's instant pot pasta and meatballs it's not spaghetti but like you can use any kind of pasta today we're using pen and bow tie noodles. You just throw it all together and it's a one pot meal. You don't have to strain anything. It's super simple. Okay, to begin our spaghetti and meatballs, we are going to turn our Instant Pot on saute mode. So it's getting nice and hot right now. And you can skip this step if you want, but it just adds a little bit extra flavor. I'm just adding a couple cups of frozen meatballs and I'm just going to saute them in some olive oil to get a little bit of flavor and crisp. Okay, so this will just take a couple minutes. After the meatballs brown a little bit like this, then we can add the rest of the ingredients. And like I said, this step is optional. It's just if you wanna add a little bit of extra flavor by browning the meatballs. Turn off your Instant Pot, and then we're going to add one pound of noodles. I am using a combination of penne noodles and bow tie because I had two half open containers. As long as they cook for about the same amount of time, it's fine. Next, add a 24 ounce jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce, and then add one jar's worth of water. I just fill up the spaghetti sauce jar with water and try and get it on the edge so we can get it underneath the meatballs and not quite on top of the sauce. If you would like, you can also add a couple extra seasonings. I've just got some Italian seasoning and I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic powder and then pat down the noodles. Make sure that they are fully submerged in the water, but you don't wanna get this tomato sauce on the bottom of the pot, otherwise it could burn. My general rule of thumb is to take half the amount of time recommended on the box for the noodle cook time and then minus one minute. So this one I'm gonna do 14, seven minutes. We're gonna do six minutes on high pressure with a quick release. After the cook time, make sure you do a quick release and this is what it looks like. You can give this a stir. If you have a little bit of liquid left in your pot, that's totally normal. It will absorb in just a couple minutes. Just let it sit for just a minute. If you feel like your noodles are not cooked enough, what you can do is just put the lid back on your Instant Pot and then let it steam through for a couple minutes using the residual heat. You don't need to pressure cook it again. Just let it steam through and the noodles will soften in about five minutes. And there you go, there's your four Instant Pot semi-homemade noodle dishes. These are so fantastic, easy, and I know you'll love them too. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you watch this one. It's my top Instant Pot recipes. There's like over an hour of content there. Super easy, essential recipes that you need for your Instant Pot, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, bye.